Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School, Class 06, Tech 23. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 10 hundred, Captain Alcorn, United States Navy, commanding officer of Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Byrne, United States Navy, the guest of honor for today's ceremony, will arrive. Guests will be asked to rise for the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and guest of honor. Guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Naval Surface Warfare Center and Naval Undersea Warfare Center, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have fashioned and created us as a people and called us as a nation to a place of trust and leadership in the world. We honor this day our newest naval officers, and we ask for your special blessing upon them as they embark on their journey into the fleet. Father, today our hearts rejoice in the day these graduates have dreamed of has finally arrived. So many are proud of their achievements. However, we are mindful that our achievements are possible only through the life you have given us, through the parents who have loved and nourished us, through the host of peers and friends along life's way who've encouraged us, and those here at Officer Training Command who guided and molded each life, developing them into our nation's newest naval leaders. No one person is an island and none are perfect, and each is a witness to your watchful care and forgiving grace. With every accomplishment and privilege came added responsibility, and each one of these officers stands here today accepting of the duty that our nation has entrusted to them. Bless all who stood by these we honor and give them an extra portion of your love. 
Watch over and protect them as they head off to their new commands. Today, they stand on the shoulders of the greatest naval leaders of history, who've inspired generations to fight for the freedoms that make our country great. Give them the strength and courage to carry on that legacy. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Byrne, Captain Rosette, Captain Hetzler, Captain Strano, Captain Cook, Commander Hinckley, Commander Simon, Master Gunnery Sergeant Diaz, distinguished guests, veterans, Officer Training Command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers of Class 0623. Good morning. Good morning sir. I'm excited to welcome 61 of our newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of Naval Officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these individuals. Your love and support and encouragement have produced the quality individuals seated here. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of a Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, as commanding officer, I am proud of all of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you've chosen this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles, and nothing was handed to you except opportunity opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You've seized that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It's now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You'll be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you're going to be doing significant and meaningful work for your country. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark upon a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you've ever had or ever will have. And regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my honor and privilege this morning to introduce our guest of honor, Commander Naval Surface Warfare Center, Commander Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Rear Admiral Kevin Byrne. Admiral Byrne is a native of St. Louis, Missouri. He's a 1993 graduate of the United States Naval Academy. He attended the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, graduating in 1999 with a Master of Science in Operations Research. At sea, he served as the commanding officer and executive officer of USS Barry, DDG-52. 
He's also served as Executive Officer and Combat Systems and Weapons Officer aboard the USS Camp St. George, CG-71. He completed his initial sea tours as Operations Officer aboard USS Defender, MCM-2, and Navigator aboard the USS Mount Whitney, LCC-20. Ashore, he served as a Major Program Manager for Surface Ship Modernization for Naval Sea Systems Command Surface Directorate. In this position, he was responsible for the modernization of nine classes of ships. Previously, he served as the Fleet Introduction Program Manager for Aegis Ashore and the Aegis Combat Systems and the Program Executive Officer for Integrated Warfare Systems. He also served as Flag Aide to Commander Nav C. His Pentagon tours included as an analyst for the Director of Program and Evaluation with the Office of the Secretary of Defense. He assumed duties as Commander Naval Surface Warfare Center, Naval Undersea Warfare Center on April 20th, 2020. He leads more than 29,000 scientists, engineers, technicians, and support personnel, both civilian and active duty, at eight surface warfare divisions and two undersea warfare divisions. The NAVC Warfare Centers provide research, development, test, and evaluation for the future Navy, as well as in-service engineering and logistics support for our operational naval forces. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are privileged to have him here with us to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Kevin Byrne. Hey, good morning, and uh, thank you, Captain Alcorn, for the uh, kind introduction and the invitation to, to speak here. So it's great to be here in person to, to wish you well as you embark on your next step of your Navy journey. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize the family and friends uh, who are here with us today, as well as those who can't be with us uh, who hopefully are able to join us online. It's important to recognize that we get nowhere without help. I know I would not be here today if we're not for family and the men and women with whom I've served. I'd ask the candidates to reflect on those people that supported your journey to this point through the challenges you've overcome to be here today, and especially the challenges posed by the pandemic over the past few years. More than likely, your family and friends have helped you get to this day. Their support is a force multiplier. Your Navy also owes your family and friends a debt of gratitude for their support and for the support that is yet to come. So candidates, please join me in giving the family and friends a round of applause. The Officer Candidate School course you've completed today has given you the working knowledge of the Navy, prepared you to assume the responsibility of a Naval Officer, and continue the process of developing you to be the fullest potential. Let me stress, continue the process of developing you to your fullest potential. Your development does not end today, nor will it end when all you achieve your first warfare qualification. It will continue throughout your entire Navy career. When you raise your right hand to take the oath in a few minutes, you will be joining the Officer's wardroom and committed yourself to this naval profession, a profession that makes a real difference and represents something larger than yourselves. Our world is once again in an era of great power competition and our competitors are gaining strength. Today, it is not enough to just be able to simply deter aggression, we must be ready to fight and win. As the Chief of Naval Operations outlined in his navigation plan, today, for the first time in a generation, we face a strategic uh, competitor with, who has demonstrated intent to unravel the free and open order. The U.S. Navy will build, maintain, train, and equip a combat credible, dominant naval force to keep its sea lanes open and free, deter conflict, and when called upon, decisively win our nation's wars. As you leave OCS, you will be entering our Navy with game-changing new ships and weapons, either in design or under construction. Lasers, hypersonic missiles, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and advanced surface, undersea, and aviation platforms are among the new capabilities that continue to increase by the day. As our, as our Navy grows and we arm them with these newer capabilities, you are the officers that will lead the way. You will be the leaders of the Navy with the new strategies, technologies, and ideas. Furthering our advantage as the world's greatest Navy requires leaders who personify our moral obligation to the Naval profession by upholding Navy core values, fulfilling our obligations as leaders of characters, integrity, and confidently exercising our authority and responsibility with a strong and abiding sense of accountability for action throughout a career of selfless service. Our best leaders encourage the development and growth of our, their teams and listen to and trust their ideas and recommendations. 
One of the most important responsibilities to be charged with as a naval officer is establishing and bonding unique culture at your command. Within the Warfare Centers, we have formalized our uh, foundational values with a statement that reads in part, we strive to have a culture that is inclusive, engaging, and one in which we excel together. It is shaped by living the values of honesty, integrity, unity, empowerment, and service. We will treat one another with respect and dignity, assume good intentions of others, and cultivate trust in all we do. So how do we do these things? We take the time to get to know people around us. We work with one another in a positive and proactive way. You have the power to change the culture around you and touch the lives of those you lead, which is a powerful legacy. You, the future leaders of this great Navy, will continue to build our legacy as you embody our values. It's also important to keep learning. Most of you are headed off to additional training. Some of you, particularly those about to start nuclear power or aviation career, have years of training ahead of you. No matter what your specialty, and I notice that there are 11 different specialties among the 61 graduates in this class, I promise you the United States Navy's investment in you has only just begun. As a leader, you must commit yourself to a lifelong learning. Sometimes the Navy will push the learning to you. Other times, the ball will be in your court to go after. Whether it be an advanced degree, off-duty reading, or certification program, I challenge you to push yourself. Or remain open to new ideas, new technologies, or new ways to make yourself as an individual or organization more effective and efficient. Share your passion for learning with your sailors and help them to have the same opportunities to learn that you have. As you move from assignment to assignment, the learning never stops. You will learn new skills, meet new people, and face new challenges. And with each assignment, you will grow and become a better version of yourself both personally and professionally. Finally, I want to stress the importance of communication. Make connections, personally and professionally, because those relationships will help you throughout your journey, both in good times as well as the more challenging ones. Many of the individuals you're seated with today will turn out to be your lifelong friends and or colleagues who will serve with over and over again. Whether you serve for five years or 35 years, the bonds formed here at Newport will last a lifetime. I expect that in 30 years or so, one of you may be where I am, addressing, addressing a graduating OCS class, or maybe even the Chief of Naval Operation. Don't miss a chance to seize an opportunity for making connections with those around you. Now a little about your commissioning. All of you are about to take an oath, not to a sovereign ruler, but to a set of ideas embodied in our Constitution. With the oath of office, you will assume the duties, the responsibilities, and accountability that come with it as an ensign in the United States Navy. This is one of the things about the United States military that sets it apart from the other militaries across the world. Very soon, America will trust its sons and daughters to your care. They're out there even now awaiting your leadership. As you take your commission, you take this mantle of responsibility. You have to commit to the team and win no matter what stands in your way, because our way of life depends on it. Providing clear direction and an outstand, uh, understanding of the objectives is important to get the most out of your team and even yourself. I, as I review the class in preparation for today, I noted this class hails from no less than 24 states, Puerto Rico, and two foreign countries. You represent the very best our country has to offer. With the talent you have, you probably could have worked anywhere, but you chose to serve in the United States Navy. For your commitment, we are all incredibly grateful. I can tell you from my own experience that there's something truly special about the path you've chosen. Personally, I recognize that about one year out of the Naval Academy, I was standing watch on the bridge at night aboard USS Defender. I knew that those kinds of experiences, which I'll carry for the rest of my life, were very different from those of most of my high school friends. So graduates, congratulations to you as you begin your service as a commissioned officer in the world's finest Navy. You made it. Your new careers, I promise you, will be filled with absolutely amazing opportunities to learn, serve, and lead. All of you should be excited for what lies ahead of you. I wish all of you the very best, welcome you to the Navy family, and look forward to hearing about your future successes. Thank you very much. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Class 06 Tech 23, raise your right hand. I state your name. 
Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, do hereby accept such appointment, and do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any, any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office in which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and guest of honor for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. Ensign Kelsch has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas Eady Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. Ensign Kelsch has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Kelsch is a distinguished Naval graduate. Anson Hutstadt has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending Officer Candidate School. Anson Hutstadt has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-114 USS Ralph Johnson, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Anson Hudstad is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Smith has been awarded the Commander Jack Leavitt Leadership Award, having been chosen by her peers as a candidate who most inspired her class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Anson Smith has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG 80. USS Roosevelt, homeported in Rota, Spain. Anson Smith is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Johnson has been awarded the Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. Anson Johnson has been designated as an Explosive Ordnance Disposal Officer and has been assigned to Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center in Panama City, Florida. Anson Johnson is a distinguished naval graduate. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Marson L. has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Tavone has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign McNeely has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign McNeely is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Gonzalez M. has been designated as an information professional officer and has been assigned to information professional basic course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Conroy has been designated as a submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Goose Creek, South Carolina. Ensign Nemeth has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Center for Service Support in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Bundu has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Center for Service Support in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Detres Bonnet has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS Crew 120, homeported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Green has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Amador has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Barker has been designated 
as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-83, USS Howard, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Anthem Bertha Cell has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to L LSD-47, USS Rushmore, homeported in Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Buchanan has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Buck has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Cobb has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Anson Conway has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS Crew 218, homeported in San Diego, California. Anson Crutchfield has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Cup has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG 110, USS William P. Lawrence, homeported in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Anson D'Andrea has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-104 USS Sterrett, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Davis D. has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Center for Service Support in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Davis has been desig designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-45 USS Comstock, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Dye has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-122 USS John Bassalone, homeported in Bath, Maine. Ensign Diaz has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-118 USS Daniel Inouye, homeported in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Entrant Gervain Carr has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Oshimakai has been designated as an Aviation Maintenance Officer and has been assigned to Aviation Maintenance Officer School in Milton, Florida. Ensign Faulkner has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Golden has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Gonzalez J has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to information warfare basic course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Ha has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG 121 USS Frank E. Peterson Jr., homeported in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Harris has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hayes has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Herrera has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hetzler has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Johnson M has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Center for Service Support in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Cadunz has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lamphere has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lopez has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Mack has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LPD-20 USS Green Bay, homeported in Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Matchum has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to Center for Service Support in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Morris has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS Crew 233, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Morrison P has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Naughton has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. 
Ensign Norman has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rossler has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rowe has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Sali has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign San Filippo has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Schmicking has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Suler has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Schuler is a di distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Sharma has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Sharma is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Stauffer has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Stoddard has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Torres has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Vu has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-52 USS John Paul Jones, homeported in Everett, Washington. Ensign White has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Wolf has been designated as a submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Goose Creek, South Carolina. Ensign Deweese has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field.
On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the graduation ceremony. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. See you soon.